Our next guest says that the American dream is in jeopardy, and in a new book he offers a detailed guide on how to reshape our future. Joining us now from D.C. is George Munoz, president of Munoz Investment Banking Group, former Treasury CFO under the Clinton administration, and co-author of the book, Renewing the American Dream. George, thank you for being here. What's wrong with the American Dream? Did it really change that much? Do we need to really, is it still there? Well, there's nothing wrong with it, and that's the problem, is that it's disappearing for many Americans. The economy right now, everybody's focused on it in terms of how to turn it around, but there's a bigger, there's a bigger problem here. For the last decade or two, our country has been sliding down in important sectors that guarantee our competitive edge around the world, and that is what is endangered. And when people start losing faith, in the American dream, they start losing faith in everything that motivates them to work hard and obey by, you know, follow the rules. Well, how do we get over that? I mean, you're, George, Brian Sullivan, you're talking about a psychological problem, right? I mean, how, how, do, we, well, how do we convert that then? It's, it's important. It, it's psychological, for first of all, for all those people that are unemployed. And, and if unemployed were a sector That's a cash flow country, problem. I mean, that, that's an economic problem. No, no. You know what? If, if unemployed, if those people that are unemployed was a sector, that sector is larger than our manufacturing sector in this country. That is, our manufacturing sector employs roughly right under 10 percent of, of the workforce. Our unemployed is at the same percentage, if not a little higher in terms of number. Well, this country cannot tolerate that. As the world becomes more competitive, as it moves faster and faster, those people that are unemployed are not only in a cash flow problem, but they get uh, their, their, whole, uh, their morale is down, but more importantly, their skill set is down. Because when they're ready to get back into the workforce, because our economy has somehow re rebounded, they may not be able to do so. And therefore, the only jobs they can take are the old kind of jobs that are lesser paying, less, they're not the high value jobs that this country needs. Isn't it a chicken and egg problem, though, George, that you need jobs to get the economy to come back, but why not you try and focus on the economy, then the jobs will follow? No, I, I, I think that uh, where we have it wrong is that the money, whether you're talking about a stimulus money or the like, unless it's focused in job creations, this is where I differ. In the old days, people said it's the economy, stupid. Well, in this case, if we, if we, if we just get going again in the wrong direction without the right kinds of jobs, I think we're going to find ourselves in, in, a, in, a, in, in a cycle where we'll have these problems forever. We need to have high-value jobs. So what does that mean? We need to get our manufacturing sector to grow again. It's been slipping and slipping, and we cannot be cre uh, developing ideas in our country but exporting them for manufacturing elsewhere, and then we buy them back, our own products. So without a manufacturing sector, I think we're, we're going to have a problem. One of the things we write in our book is about Enterprise USA, and what that means is that in America, we have the advantages that we not only know how to do strategic plans, but, our, but most of us know how to execute. But we execute on the plans that we adopt. And what's happening now is so many of our policies uh, are, are siloed. But uh, instead of being George, a quickly plan. though, the American dream to me is starting and running your own business. And is there a country, yes. another country in this world that is better at creating capital for those very startups? No better country than the United States, and that's how we want to do it, and that's what we're saying. This decade that we're in now is the decisive decade. That is, unless, for example, capital flows. I was the head of OPIC, the Overseas Private Investment Corporation. That's a development bank that the United States established in order to help other countries, the emerging market countries, have capital so that their small businesses could grow and employ people. We don't have a development bank similar to that in the United States. So our book advocates having okay. not an OPIC, but an APIC, American uh, Private Investment Corporation, so that small businesses can have capitals. And the banks can't do it. Uh, Bernanke spoke about this uh, yesterday. And what's happening is the banks, because of consolidation, they're not at the street level. They're no longer, yeah. you, you can walk into any bank branch and see if you can talk to a loan well, officer. That's the difference, the difference between being a creditor and an owner, too, George. Thank you so much. Please come back. All right. George Munoz, co-author of the book, Renewing the American Dream.